Okay, so you bought your Hemingway online. You wait for the FedEx Santa to deliver the box. You open the box up. You spend a half hour putting it together, which isn't very much. The bike is already 90, 95% built. Then you look to your side and you see what is perhaps the greatest mystery next to are we alone in the universe? And that is, what are these and where do they go? And well, in today's video, I'm going to go over some tips and tricks and show you a few things that you may not have known about your Hemiway Cruiser and you might just be surprised. So let's go ahead and start with this little doohickey right here. This is a little L bracket and it's for installing your headlamp higher above the fender. That way you can angle it downward and get a good angle on the road or path in front of you. Most people will take this metal housing and screw it in down here, which means the lamp is lower and when you try to angle it downward in the path in front of you, you usually catch the front of the fender and it, you cast a shadow in front of you. So that L bracket is right here. That, that black L bracket up and then over. Right there, just so you can get the headlamp a little higher. The next mystery is this really thick and sturdy bar. And this bar is used to protect a component on your bike. That is for your derailleur. All these components here on your derailleur system is very sensitive. Just moving it a little out of whack can mess up the whole gearing system on your cogs when you're shifting. So this derailleur is used, screwed in at two points. This is used to protect your derailleur from a lot of bumps and scrapes and whatnot. So get you a little closer look at where it's screwing in at. Again, that's your derailleur guard. Very optional. You don't have to put it on if you don't want to, but it's always a good thing to use protect your derailleur. Okay, another common issue. So you're walking around your garage or you're outside and you see this tiny little black piece of plastic on the ground or on the floor and you can't identify. You're wondering, oh my goodness, what, what is this? Did it fall off my car? Did it fall off something important? What is it? So if you see a piece or a part that looks just like this, shaped like this, <laughs> it's for your fender. Yes, this this is a very common thing that falls off your fender. Um, they're not on very strong. In fact, I think it's just like a snap on it. It's like a little hole with a little rivet thing on the fender and it's supposed to fit through the hole. But these tend to fall off a lot. Sometimes you can't even find them because when you're driving, hitting bumps on a trail or somewhere and it just falls off and you'll never find it again. So if you want to do a preventative and make sure it doesn't fall off in the future. You know, you could do what I did and then I just hot glued it together. You could possibly even super glue it. But uh, that's the, you know, if you want to beat it to the punch before falling off, you can go ahead and do that. Or if you end up finding it on the ground, like most people and wondering what the heck it is and where it fell off of, well, now you know, it's from your fender. Okay, so another tip is uh, I don't know if you've noticed, but does your bike have a serious lean? Yes, that's right. I'm talking about the kickstand. When you get these out of the box, these kickstands might be adjusted shorter than you may want them. And 
Yes, I said adjusted. So what this means is your kickstand is adjustable. Now you may not know this. You may not know that your kickstand could be adjusted uh, up or down. And this bottom section right here is a screw behind there which lets you adjust it up and down so you can control the lean of your bike. Now, another thing is too, if that screw is too loose and it's not tight, some people have complained about losing the bottom portion of their kickstand because when they kick it, it just flies off and they don't realize it and they drive away and then they've lost it. So, two things. When you get it out of the box, adjust it, and then make sure you tighten it. That way you don't lose it and don't have to replace it. So I'm going to show you where that screw is, which is right back here. Do you see it? Right there. And that is how you adjust the kickstand. So here's another tip and trick that you guys might find interesting. Now Hemiway has uh, branding, as you can see on their down tube, on their frame there, and they also have branding on their battery. Now, if you're like me, uh, and some of you are, and I, I've seen that, some of you like to put your own vinyl stickers on here, some of you like the, the all black stealth look, and that's fine, I like, that's how I like it, I like the nice black stealth look on this bike. Uh, of course, you know, I didn't like that gray, large Hemiway thing on the side of the battery. So I wondered what it would look like if I took it off. Well, just just to e put you guys' you know, minds at ease, it is one of those vinyl stickers that once you start it, it peels off really nice. No residue. It just comes right off like butter. So if you're looking for that, that look or you're looking to apply your own vinyl graphics on the side, don't be afraid of the sticker coming off and leaving a bunch of residue that you have to clean up. Uh, it's easy. It just comes off really, really easy. And then you can either leave it that way or put on your own, your own sticker or decals. So just want to give you guys that little tip uh, just in case you were wondering or didn't want to tackle something like that because you were worried about the mess it might leave on the battery. Okay, so next I wanted to go over a few little things uh, in your LCD display. Uh, let's say you wanted to adjust the backlight brightness of your display. Well, you press and hold plus and minus for a couple of seconds. You'll see that screen. That right there is if you want to reset your trip. We don't want to do that. So we're going to just go on to the next screen. Now that BL, which is flashing three, BL stands for backlight. Now you can decrease the light. You can probably tell a little bit on the brightness and hopefully it's showing up on the, on the video. Or decrease, increase it or decrease it, okay? So that's how you would adjust the backlight brightness of your screen. And then to go back, you just press and hold the I button, the information button, takes you back to the main. Now, let's go ahead and adjust the settings for miles per hour or for kilometers. So same thing, plus or minus for a couple seconds. Here we go. Uh, we're gonna skip that because that's not what we want. We're just pressing I to, to continue to enter. We don't want backlight because we just did that. The next one is U. Uh, you can look at U as far as units. So as you can see, we have miles per hour. If you were to press the up button, it shows kilometers per hour miles per hour, kilometers. And then, of course, I'm here in the US and I prefer miles per hour. I'm going to accept that and you can just go ahead and press and hold the I button until it goes back to the main screen. Now, if you're interested in how to increase uh, the pedal assist levels and percentage of power given per level, along with uh, increasing the speed uh, by a few miles per hour, be sure to check out the link I left below to a previous video I did on how to unlock those parameters. So here's another question that's often asked. How did you get the Cloud 9 seat on the Hemiway? Well, many folks uh, are kind of stumped on this. Um, and yes, when, on most of these Cloud 9 seats, when you get them, 
they are a little wider and you just need to squeeze them together to get them to fit on the post and i will show you that in a second but yes the cloud nine seat is is a very popular seat uh, as you can see it does add a little bit of spring suspension in the back since the hemingway does come in front suspension it doesn't have any rear suspension but with the seat you can add some suspension in the back so the cloud nine seat is not that difficult to put on but I'm going to show you a little tip and trick on how to get that on. Okay, so here is the Hemiway stock seat. When you look underneath, you'll see these two bars. Now, this is already on your seat post. Obviously, when you get the bike and you unbox it, this is, this is normal. It fits right on your seat post. Okay, It fits right on the post right between here just fine, no problem. But when you get the Cloud9 seat, a lot of these, these bars are too wide. So when you look at the space that's available, it's off by like that much. You have to line up this bar to fit in here and this bar to fit in here. Okay, it needs to fit right between the two holes or, or gaps on the end. So how do you get this to fit in here? Well, if you're strong enough, you could probably squeeze it together, but I don't, I, I, that's probably going to hurt a little bit. So what I did is I have these channel locks and I fit, fit around there like that and I squeezed it until it, it got to the distance that would fit in between the two gaps on the end. So that way when you put it together, Now all you have to do is close the gap. As you can see, it's right there and you just have to tighten it on the screw. And that is how you get the Cloud9 seat on the Promax Hemiway seat post. So next is a little tip on battery longevity. So here we have the Hemiway uh, Samsung uh, battery, which is uh, 48 volt and 17 amps. It's also lithium and like any other lithium battery uh, it does require a little bit of uh, maintenance to make it last longer and some of the things that you can do is definitely whether it's winter or it's a hot and humid day you definitely don't want to charge a battery in those extreme conditions because it's not going to work properly you may notice some hesitation or it might not uh, work at all. It might heat up and get too hot. So you definitely don't want to charge it in those extreme conditions. Also, if you're not going to be riding your bike in those hot or cold conditions for a while, then definitely take your battery out just by putting the key in there. Comes out, slides out the other side. I'm going to slap it right back in. Take your battery out. Bring it inside to where it's you know, room temperature and keep it there until it's time to ride again. Now, you don't want to always max your battery at a 100% charge every single time. Unless, the only way you should do that is if you're going on a long run from 100% charge, you take your bike out, you ride it all day, and your bike is down to like 10%, 5% left, you know, then yeah definitely go ahead and charge it all the way full that's that's fine because you're going to be you know riding it all the time and that's fine but if you're just taking your you know your bike out from a, from a full charge you just take it out for a few miles and you come back and you're you're only at like say 90 percent 85 percent you don't have to charge it in fact it's better that you don't if you want your battery to last longer just let it sit at that 85 90 percent especially if you know you're going to be going back out again in a day or two then you drive it again for a few more miles and now maybe your battery's down to like, you know, 70%. That's, 
That's fine. You don't have to charge it yet. You don't really have to charge it until your battery is down to about, you know, 15, 20%. Then you can charge it back up again. But definitely don't charge it at 100% all the time, especially if you're only using, you know, 10 or 15% of it. Because there's only so many cycles that you have to fully charge. And you want your cells to last a lot longer. But also, another thing is, make sure to take your battery off when you're uh, transporting your bike. Say, if your bike is on a back rack that's hitched to your vehicle. Leaving your battery on, I mean, not only does it create weight, but leaving your battery on also leaves it vulnerable to the exhaust, which is right in the back of your car, the heat, fumes, carbon that's in there can also get in between the, the any seals or contacts and you definitely don't want to ruin your battery by leaving it in while traveling uh, you know when it's attached to the back of your vehicle near the exhaust and another question that's often asked is why are there two different tops on my shocks what is that why, why is one dark and why is the other one light like it's missing something well, I, I assure you, it's you're not missing any caps or anything like that. It's just so they can diff, tell the difference between the two settings. This side, which is on the right-hand side of your bike if you're sitting on it, this is to lock the suspension down, which means you won't have any suspension at all. You can lock it to where it's almost like a straight bar. And then the other side, to unlock it, means you have suspension. Now the other side is completely different. The preload uh, adjustment that just basically sets the setting to how much how much is going to go down. One way you you will allow the shocks to go all the way down as much as it can, and the other way, as you tune it, the other way, this gives you a little bit. So you can adjust how much travel you give the shocks. So this is adjusting on the left side, and on the other side you have the lockout. So again, you're not missing anything, <laughs> no missing pieces, that's the way it's designed so that you know the difference between the two. Another tip when it comes to pulling the connectors apart, uh, I notice a lot of people tend to wonder how to pull these apart because it's so tight they don't know how to get it off and they're legitimately concerned because they don't want to break it and uh, your concerns are right because these are very very sensitive the pins doesn't take much to, to break them or bend them so once they're out of whack it, it's very difficult to align them back up which is why they also have these arrows if you can see these arrows on both ends of the connectors to line them up just right but taking them apart is usually the tough part that most folks have a problem with and there are many ways you can do it but I'm going to show you a way that I've done it uh, over the last year or so whenever I need to disconnect them I just use two pliers so I just put them right near the end of each connector now I'm not squeezing them or trying to you know apply pressure on the ends I'm just going to use the very tips of the uh, pliers as leverage to pull and it's as easy as that so when you want to put it back together again it might be hard to focus but this is the male end you have three pins this is the female end you have the holes and you line up the arrow with the arrow and there you go as easy as that. All right, so that's it for tips and tricks on the Hemingway Cruiser. Be sure to uh, like my video if you like it, and if you want to support my channel, please hit that subscribe button and catch future content, and I'll see you in another video.